Praise the Lord. Welcome again in our midst. God bless you mightily. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We bless your name for this wonderful privilege, for wonderful goodness that you have shown us. I pray that your will be done in our life. Help us to succeed beyond measure in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to talk about immorality in the church. In Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 9, immorality in the church. He said, Will you steal? What do you mean by stealing? I was told of a pastor in a particular big church who only sleep with married women. You're a thief. <laughs> Pastor, the thief. They say the pastor is supposedly in the occult. Now he buys white handkerchief, pack of it, and brings it out. And then this married woman will go to him. He has already bewitched them. We go to him, and he will have sex with them in the office. And then we wipe the, the, their body, put the handkerchief inside the lady, and clean himself with that white handkerchief. When he comes to the pulpit and begins to wave the handkerchief, people will be falling into what they call anointing. Pastor, you are a thief. <laughs> the Bible said in Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 9, Will you steal another person's wife? Mother, some of the women will conceive. Why the husband traveled? They will go and do abortion. Pastor, you are a murderer. And commit adultery. You are an adulteress. And swear falsely and come in the church and then begin to brag. And swear. You walk after other God to get that white handkerchief or the ring you have, big ring you have in your hand. <laughs> That's a common thing among them now, even among the so-called bishop. Check the ring in your hand. Where did he get it? Let me start verse 9 again so that you'll understand. All this big ring, I'm not talking about wedding ring. I'm not against it. All those big rings, where do you get it? All those big, big sword, where do you get it? I hope he's not in the cult. Well, if he's not in the cult, God bless you. If it is in the cult, hear the word of God. The Bible is asking you a question in verse 8. He said, Behold, you trust in lying words that profit not. Will you steal in verse 9? Will you murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, burn incense unto bar, and walk after the gods whom you know not? Where you go to get fake power. Verse 10. And come and stand before me in this house. Preaching in the pulpit. Singing in the choir. Praying in the prayer team. Doing ushering work. Standing as if we are holy. Will you come into the house of God and stand before me in this house? which is called by my name, and say we are delivered to do all these abominations. Immorality in the church, occultism in the church, wickedness in the church, murders in the church, murderers in the church, falsehood swearers in the church, fornicators in the church, young pastors who sleep with their members, you are a fornicator. Will you survive this when the consequences come? I went to somewhere to preach in one of the states in Nigeria, and the lady spotted me from the congregation. I didn't know how she got my number. And while she called me, I was already in the airport about to take a flight. She came to the airport. One, thing, one, one discussion led to one another. She had my address where I was living. She traveled from that state to the state where I was, stayed with the auntie very close there, and came when my children had gone to school. Say, Pastor, I want to give you my free sex. She talked and talked and talked and talked. 
and said, let me talk. I started talking to her. After I talked to her, I told her all that I used to tell other ladies. And they would tell me, Pastor, we're sorry. And they would go and put on their clothes, which they have put in off, you know, that ready for, for, for adultery and fornication. But after talking to this lady, she looked at me from head to the toe. He said, brainwashed. I asked her, why are you so like this? I told her, if I do this thing you want me to do, that is, I will lose the only thing that is left for me to be doing in life, which is this ministry that you are now. She said, Pastor, you are right. Because the last bishop that I did it with, when she, he was dying in the hospital, the pains that was on him was so excruciating to the extent that no drug that stopped pain could stop it. He said the pastor was weeping until he gave up the ghost. I said, that is what you want me to do. You know all these things. And you come to me boldly to have sex with me. I like Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 9. He said, will you steal another person's wife? Another person's vagina? Will you steal murder? And commit adultery and swear falsely and burn incense unto God where you get this fake power? And walk after other gods whom you know not. You don't even know the details of the demons. All you know is that you go to that place, a particular country, another country, and a particular region where they hang a dead body on the surface, hang it up, and then put basins under the ground. And it will, they will do some sacrifice. The body of that person, human being, will decay and then drop some water inside the basin. And when they do sacrifice and all the incantation and the concussion, and when they put it in the eyes of the pastor, and the pastor will see everything, see the color of your pant, tell you their phone number you have, tell you their village, and they mention the tree exactly where it is, but they cannot deliver you and chase away the demon. What do they do? They transfer demon from head to the stomach. And when you pray or give them seed very well, they transfer it to your son. And when you go to hospital and then pray, and then that thing goes uh, through the prayer of that pastor, and then that thing will go out of your son and enter your daughter, then you will be fighting battle without a stop all the days of your life. The Bible says, I shall ask you, behold, you trust in lying wonders. You don't know the details of those demons. You don't know. The demons are always in a senior covenant. A senior, is, will, the demons are always senior in every relationship. They don't give you details. The Bible says I should ask you this question. Will you continue to steal members of the church, members of the body of Christ, ushers, prayer warriors, who go to all night, and after all night they will go and sleep? Oh, that reminds me. I met a particular lady. She did everything, did everything, did everything, did everything, and she couldn't succeed. She said, Pastor, if I had known you when I got newly born again, I would have been a better Christian. I said, I don't understand. He said, the pastor told me that this thing, you do it. They just confess. He said, he will travel, he will tell the, the parents, I'm going for all night. You go to the pastor's house and they will sleep together and the pastor will drive her to the church and then pastor will preach powerful and there will be manifestation. That is demonic demonstration, not manifestation of the Greek ghost. Are you hearing me? Let me ask you a question again. According to the book of Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 9. Will you still murder, commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense unto bars, and walk after other gods where they put something in your eyes? When they put it in your ear, you hear everything that the Spirit is saying. When they put it in your hand, whoever you lay hand upon, fall like, I don't know how to describe it. And he said, gods, no. You are doing it with demons. You don't know. You are entering the covenant with demons. You don't know. 
Do you know that if you commit fornication with a cultic man, with a witch or wizard, a measure of witchcraft spirit and occultism enters into you. And you're doing hookup from different man to another different but different woman to another different woman. The Bible says, as you, ask, as you say again in verse 10, and come, when you do all these things, you see, carry your Bible, you go to church. You drop your Bible at home, you go to hook up in the night, you carry it in the video, you go for Bible study, you, be, you do the ushering work, you even mount the pulpit and sing special number and give testimony how God has blessed you. You now have free television in your house, you have fridge. You don't tell us how you get that money from Sugar Daddy. Look at verse 10. He said, And come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name. And say we are delivered to buy fridge. We are delivered to get money to buy clothes. We are delivered to pass an exam which you use your body to pay the lecturer to pass you from failure to distinction A1. You will do all these abominations. You see, come to the house of God. You tie your hair card, your head care. You enter into you mount the pulpit, you, you begin to preach. Immorality in the church is so rampant. And let me tell you what happened in Deuteronomy chapter 23. Deuteronomy chapter 23. I'm going to read in verse 17 alone. There shall be no war. This word, W-H-O-R-E, is an old in language, English language. It means prostitution. There shall be no prostitution, prostitute of the daughters of Israel, of children of God who are in the choir, of children of God who come to church, of children of God who go to Bible study, of children of God who preach in the pulpit, of children of God who usher people in. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 7 says, There shall be no immorality in the church. Verse 17 says, There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel, gays, lesbianism, man and man doing some things together, woman and woman doing some things together. of God. Are you among the person who is not a gay, but you go to witness a marriage of a gay, a marriage of a lesbianism? Are you among the person who wed them? Are you among the person who preach to encourage people? The Bible said it is a son. There shall be nothing like that. If it is going to be done at all, let it be done in the occult. Let it be done in the people who are among unbelievers, sinners, not in the house of God. God say it is wrong. God said this thing ought not to be. God said children, his own children should not encourage this thing. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, I want to show you something in verse 11. It says, but now, are you hearing me? But now, I have written unto you, not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, or covetous, or an idolater, or a rarer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such an one, know not to eat. Don't follow him. That reminds me, a lady I met somewhere I went to preach. He called me and said, Daddy, it has happened. I said, what happened? He said, the, 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 the keyboardist, the person that played the keyboard in the church, very excellent, invited him. And with the way he played keyboard and the way he sing, he didn't suspect anything. So he went to the house to see the boy and nobody in the house. And then the boy raped her, tore her clothes and raped her. She cried out and called the mother of the boy, saying, look at what your son has done. He said, what did you go to the house to do? So you have defied my son. I said, why don't you dare tell us? He said, nobody will believe it. Because it happened in the house of the boy. I didn't know whether it resulted to criminal grancy. Whichever be. I want to read to you. 
in some places before we go into prayers. My brothers and sisters, immorality in the church is worse than any other immorality. Even though all immorality is a sin, but the one in the church pains God to his heart. Leviticus chapter 21. Leviticus chapter 21. I read verse 9. Good. And the daughter of any priest. Oh my God. God, please deliver us. The daughter of any priest. If she profane herself by playing the whore, she profaned his father. His father used to be holy, preach holiness. But the daughter now begin to get covetous and follow this Yahoo Yahoo. What do you call it, Yahoo Yahoo? Internet fraud stars. And follow these drug peddlers. And follow sinners. And follow them from one hotel to another hotel. Are they defying themselves alone? No, they are defying their father. That is what the Bible said. They are defying their father. Their father may be holy at that time. As they continue to do it, and continue to do it, a measure of the defilement that comes into them enters into their holy father, who is in the pulpit. Their father will begin to lust after another man's wife. Their father will begin to lust after another, man's, uh, another woman. Their father will begin to lust, lust for prosperity that he is not... I don't know how to explain it, but let me show you what happened in verse 9. Are you there? Leviticus chapter what? 21, verse 9. Look at it. It's the word of God. And the daughter of any priest, any pastor, apostle, bishop, if she profane herself by playing the whore, by doing pursuit, by doing hookup. Profaning herself? It didn't stop there. She also, the father also have a portion of that profanity, of that defilement, of that pollution, of that contamination, of the spirit of lust for that woman. She profaned her father. She shall be born to fire. Oh, you mean we should go and get all those girls now that are, that are prostituted and born there with fire? That is not exactly what the Bible said in the New Testament. Some people are, have fire moving inside their body. Fire of HIV. Fire of abortion. Fire of miscarriage. Fire of demons. Different fire of cancer. cancer different fire. I'm not saying that all that suffer these things is coming from there, but majority of them comes. They have fire, strange fire burning in them. Sickness and disease, poverty, suffering, hardship, terribleness, marital failure. That's the fire that is burning in them. Man. The fire of marital failure. That's what the Bible is saying. What is the cure? What is the cure? The deliverance for sexual immorality in our generation, in the church. Matthew chapter 26. I'm going to read verse 28. 28, we're about to pray. For this is my blood of the New Testament. Have you have encounter with these bloods? The blood that speaketh better than that the blood of Abel. The blood that dropped on the ground and the foundation that God used to lay the, the ground, the foundation stone, the cornerstone, the foundation, the thing in the foundation cracked. And every grave holding human body that are dead opened and released all the saints that were captured over the years. And they came out and walk in the street of Jerusalem. The blood that poured on the ground and the earthquake. There was an earthquake. The blood that dropped on the ground and even the centurion confessed that this is a son of God indeed. 
have you allowed that blood to drop in your defiled eyes? Have you, by prayer in faith, applied the blood of Jesus Christ in your two ears? Have you, by faith, prayed that your tongue should be soaked in the, with the, with the blood of Jesus? Have you, by faith, dipped your private organ to the blood of Jesus? Have you, by faith, surrendered to the speaking blood of Jesus to speak for you? That is the problem. Many people come into the church, but they don't know how to appropriate the power that is in the blood of Jesus, to use the power that is in the blood of Jesus, to pray with that power, to ask Jesus Christ to drop his blood in your two eyes, in your foreheads. The Bible says, in verse 28 of Matthew chapter 26, for this is my blood. Jesus Christ said, this is my blood. Have you studied those who had encounter with this blood? Have you studied it? Jesus Christ said, this is my blood. When you are called to go to do sacrifice, they will say, this is the blood of my son. Give me money as I sacrifice my son. The occult, they will go, they carry a cow, ram, and say, take this ram, kill this ram, pour the blood, this is the blood, give me money. And it's working for them. Now Jesus Christ is saying in verse 28, this is my blood of the New Testament. Leave the Old Testament, which is shed for many so that their sins will be removed. Have you had an encounter with this blood? You that is in the church, and you don't know how to stop immorality. You don't know how to break that relationship. There are pastors, they cannot say no to a particular woman. There are pastors that abandon their wife. There are pastors that no longer have sex with their wife. They have sex with a particular prophet of a particular senior witch in the church. And whatever that person says, they do it. They despise their wife, they despise their children, they despise the holy, they despise the righteous one. They are so proud and arrogant. Have you received this blood? Jesus Christ said, this is my blood. He's offering it to you now. Are you going to accept it? Are you going to confess your sin and repent and accept this blood? Forget the blood of human being in sacrifices. So get the blood that they're using to sacrifice in free medicine. They can't have access to the blood of Jesus. And yet they're getting something with lesser blood they're using to sacrifice. They're getting something with lesser blood. The blood of human being, the blood of ram, the blood of fowl, the blood of God. They have faith. And when they offer it to the occult, to the demon, the demon give them money that is corrupted, defied, and polluted, and give them cars with in tear rubber. But today, Jesus Christ is offering his own blood, greater than every other blood. The blood that speaketh is better than the blood of Abel. Are you ready for that blood? Take it, it belongs to you. Take it, you have the right to do that. Do how to get it. Repent of all your sins. Forsake them. All this immorality in the church should come to an end. Pastor, are you hearing me? Don't continue to steal people's wife. Don't murder. Don't encourage the youth to give license. Don't give license to for fornication. Don't wear the gay, the lesbianism. Don't do that. Pastors, repent. Take the blood of Jesus. Our forefathers who worshipped idols, the free mercy, the Obonis, the local cult, the idols, they give them foul and they get something. Jesus is giving you his blood. Won't you get the whole world? Will you ever lack anything if you get this blood? Father, I thank you for your children that are responding, for the sinners that are coming into you, for the blood of Jesus Christ you are giving to me, giving to us today, so that our sins can be cleansed. I'm praying that everybody receiving that Jesus today will receive the power that is in the blood of Jesus. And I pray you give us the anointing to pray into our tongue, dropping the blood of Jesus for cleansing. To pray into our two ears, dropping the blood of Jesus Christ for cleansing. To pray into our two eyes, to blot the blood of Jesus To pray into our brain, to pray into our local, everything, our business and our marriages and everything, our homes and everything we do on this earth. 
Let the blood of Jesus Christ enter. Let the blood of Jesus Christ penetrate. Let the blood of Jesus Christ take over. Let the blood of Jesus Christ speak into spirit. Let the speaking blood silence every negative word ever spoken against anybody hearing me today. Let the blood of Jesus begin to speak against all powers of darkness that is militating against our destiny and against our peace and against our happiness and against our joy and against our marriages and against our businesses and against our jobs in the office. Blood of Jesus, rise in defense and silence every negative voice, including the voice of all the senior pastors that are defiling small girls and married women and young ones in the church. Blood of Jesus Christ, expose those unrepentant ones. Remove them from the pulpit. You did it in the day of Hophini and Phinehas, the children of Eli. You removed them from the pulpit. And when uh, Nadab and Abihu tried to defy and brought strange fire of immorality, in Leviticus chapter 10, verse 1 and 2, when they brought the strange fire of immorality, you kill them right into the temple. Father, this is the time to judge the enemies. This is the time to judge the wicked pastors, the wicked choir masters, the wicked prayer warriors, the wicked workers in the church, the wicked people who handle the word of God. But they are encouraging people, giving men and women license to, to sin and to commit immorality and repent and thinking that God has forgiven them. Lord, they go to Bible study. They have sex with strange women before doing that. Will you continue to allow this thing? Bring revival by judging these people in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you, everyone. Hope you like our content. I beg you to listen to the YouTube channel, like and share, and then send your prayer requests. And subscribe to this YouTube, please.